Hey everyone, we're checking out Cleaved today. This is probably the, er, yeah, no, this is definitely the earliest I've ever checked out any visual novel. Uh, previous title holder was probably Dawn Tide by Tube, that I think was pretty early along at the time, and still is probably. Uh, but this game came out like a week ago, so this is pretty brand new, so this will be early, and if, so if you, if you check it out, don't expect to have hours and hours of content yet, but it's interesting to get in on, on the ground floor and, and see the first build of something this time. Uh, so this caught my eye for obvious reasons, because fucking Haps worked on it. How in the world Haps is working on more visual novels on top of any updates to Chemia and Interia and also doing commissions and also drawing all those, uh, drawing all those, uh, like, personal drawings while also updating three different Twitter accounts. I don't know. I don't know how anyone can do that. I forgot to prep my controller. Oop. Oh. Alarm raised in lab sub-level three. Reactor critical. Warning. Warning. Danger. Um. Are we, are we Assassin's Creeding a bit? Sorry, this is a. <laughs> this was startling. Uh, but like always, if you want to check this out, there's a link in the description to the, the itch.io page. Uh, I only saw fantasy art, so I wasn't expecting uh, sci-fi sci or or just modern, maybe. Who knows? I'm forcefully awoken from sleep as I hear the alarm ringing off in the distance, an incessant siren to notify all personnel on site of an immediate of an imminent accident. I fall off the bed. Scrambling to grab some clothing and quickly slip it on, covering myself with a shirt and trousers, getting my glasses from my bedside cabinet. Trousers? Are we English? I quickly slip on my canvas shoes, finally running to the door and grabbing a lab coat as I step outside in my cramped room. I'm just imagining like a lab coat, a graphic tee, like basketball, well no, they're trousers, and then can just canvas shoes. Like this combination is quite the... The, uh, pff, why do I always want to say melange? That's just not a sensical word here. We're moving past that. While the university may have been large, it, it was not generous with its student housing. Thankfully, it didn't take me long to rush past the security doors and other frantic students and personnel were either trying to escape the premises or direct the flow of traffic out of the building. Most students took the instructions easily. Unfortunately for me, I'm not most students. My fellow students can only imagine what kind of scientific mishap has set off alarms at our prestigious university. I am more inclined to prove my theories right. The students of Rockford Hills are hand-picked by the dean of the university as they seek gifted individuals and cultivate projects with the greatest potential. I am fortunate enough to count myself amongst these students, and even more fortunate that my chosen field of research is one that has received a lot of press from both my colleagues and my professors. Are we about to isekai? I was happy to have my colleagues be so interested in the success of my project. However, it quickly turned into a necessity rather than a passion. Over the years, my work became less about furthering my own ideas and more about others deciding the direction of my research. What started as a noble intent to, to help humanity quickly turned into a set of deadlines I needed to meet in order to please corporate backers. You're still a student? As miserable as I have been, failing more and more into this pit that I created with this constant need to tick their checklists, I was happy to know that I was nearly done. It was nearly done. This knowledge made the current situation all the more infuriating, as the second I thought I was finally onto something, my work was literally about to blow up in my face. I finished my long run from the east side of the student housing and finally make it to the physics center. Oh yeah, they're definitely English. <laughs> I saw that word. Looking around the open foyer, I saw nothing but scattered papers and flipped over office equipment. The building has been completely evacuated. Come on. I have to make it. I shout at myself as I make it to the elevator door, slamming my fist into the panel to call the lift down to my level. I enter the code for, to sublevel 3. Shit. As redundant as the word is, it's all I can say as I'm faced with the sight before me. Before me stands my machine, 
a device that I had constructed with the intent of exploring the furthest edges of reality. Oh, we're doing effects here. <laughs> uh, I don't recommend touching that. As I suspected, something had gotten wrong. How did this happen? I made sure to shut it down. There shouldn't be power in any of the segments. I can only watch in horror as I see loose objects begin to be yanked into the air and get consumed by the ever-growing expanse of a wormhole. Okay. Shit. Shit. Got, gotta find the emergency shutdown switch. It's the only thing that can override whatever is powering. I would hope you already know where it is. My thoughts are immediately interrupted as I see one, uh, some of the ceiling fall down and be pulled into the portal. Shit. It's getting stronger. My careful planning is replaced by frantic movements as I try to deactivate my machine. The longer I take, the worse it'll get. I rush over to the main console and lock the generator room. Pushing myself inside, I attempt to shut down the machine's primary power supply. Who turned on the auxiliary power? The machine had, emer had emergency backup power in the event of a blackout. This was so it could draw the necessary power during tests. Though it's always left off when it's not being used. However, I am left with a sinking feeling of dread as I see that the emergency power had been turned on. I burst into a sprint to the circuit breaker, gripping the handle. I wrench it down to shut down the machine. Nothing happened. The machine was still sparking, creating alert after alert. I feel like the other students are going to be really pissed if they find out this was on campus. <laughs> you put the Higgs boson black hole, but like for real real? I retreat to the main council. Council? <laughs> I retreat to the main console, slumping down in defeat as I stare at the marvel I created. Now the image of a nightmare. I can't stop the pending catastrophe. The wormhole has accumulated too much energy. With nothing left to do, I stare into the, into the cause of my imminent demise. My mind wanders off in a string of thoughts. How big is the explosion going to be? If I ran away, would I even get far enough to escape it? Am I going to die? The last thought sends a shudder down my spine as I can't help, I can't help but cry. Typo. Through blurry visions, I look around the room, thinking back to all the memories I made with my colleagues. I think back to how Wally would tell me that's so incredibly English. <laughs> Someone named Wally? How Wally would tell me his ideas on how to design global telecommunication so that they would not rely on satellites. I remember how Caitlin would show, her, show me her progress on genetically engineered bacteria to aid brain development and controlled mutation. Oh, these are like superhero students. Like, this is... <laughs> this isn't like the state college. <laughs> she said it was her attempt at curing diseases. Then there was Sanders. Never spoke to him much, but he was a true scientist. The crazy bastard was doing his best to combine various elements to see if it was possible to create an infinitely renewable clean energy source. I don't think you should just be randomly combining elements to see what happens. I feel like... I can go really bad, really bad fast. I remember when I met everyone. It was a big series of hellos and handshakes, except for Sanders. His first words to me were... I understand that we'll be working in Lab 16 together. My work is very dangerous. I requested there be a lockdown button installed on the inside and outside of this lab. And it will lock down the room in the event of an explosion. The materials are designed to absorb kinetic energy. So while there's no guarantee, it should help. Why is there one on the inside? In case you can't get out, you need to make the sacrifice play. You can't change someone else's life unless you're willing to sacrifice your own. Ah! Ah! My machinations remained undetected for years. <laughs> it's a, that's a that's a supervillain line. That's you could definitely make breakthroughs without making incredibly dangerous scientific risks. Wise words, Sanders. A bit pessimistic for my liking, but wise words nonetheless. That was your first conversation with them, was about this? 
Okay, I, I thought that maybe we were setting up these other characters because they're going to come up later somehow, even though I feel like we're about to get isekai into furry land. But I think it was mainly just to set up that there's a way to contain this. I'm shaken up by a heavy scratching sound. I duck out of the way as I watch the catwalk be torn from it. There's a catwalk? What does this lab look like? Somebody call up Cardamon to draw a background. Like what? What is this? This this room keeps sounding more advanced. It's starting to sound like a level from Perfect Dark, and I, it's not. I'm just. I'm. So I imagine you tell me like a lab at a, at a college. I'm thinking like fume hoods. <laughs> I took out of the way as I watched the catwalk be torn from its hinges and drag itself across the the floor towards the portal. I guess I don't have a choice. Sanders' mantra comes to the forefront of my mind. I know, we just we were just there. I dry my tears, snapping back myself back to reality. Whoop, there goes gravity up, sorry. And stealing my resolve. Well, there may be no guarantee. I can at least get engage the lockdown. I can hope there's a chance of stopping it. I use the desks as braces as I force myself over to the wall. Reactor overload. Collapse imminent. There better be some thick fucking walls. Great. I make one final push and slam my fist on the lockdown button, watching metallic shutters drop across the doorways, windows, and walls, effectively sealing me in. Pro tip for next time: I feel like that, that should be that should probably should be automated. Like if once the uh, once the alarms like this is what's happening, everything's fucked. Gonna have a, we're going nuclear. Maybe that button probably should just happen on its own at that point. <laughs> But then it wouldn't be a, a, a protagonist sacrifice. It's cold. Wait. It's cold? Why is it? How? Huh. So by starting off the reactor's power system early, you get involved to try and stop it. And you set off a new chain of events. Hey, wait a second. Are you... Are you awake? Wow. I was not expecting that. Wow, okay. Listen, I don't mean to interrupt, uh, whatever this is, but I need you to do something for me. Before you doze off, I need you to remember your name. What was it again? What's the default name? Ah. Bryn. So that's what your name is. It's been so long, I honestly don't remember. Regardless, I don't really care for much else, nor do I know what's about to happen to you. However, this should be interesting to watch. So, uh, don't die too quickly. I open my eyes and take a look at the strange place I'd found myself in. We have some kind of narrator character already? Or some kind of other consciousness? I'm still not entirely sure what happened. I engaged the lockdown in time, then the reactor exploded and I saw a bright light. I could feel the throbbing in my head as I struggled to remember what my now conscious brain could recall. Damn it. What the hell happened? The explosion should have killed me, but I'm here. Wherever the hell here is. So I take it he didn't know it was a portal? It felt pointless to think of it. I looked down at my body. My tattered clothes revealed not the slightest hint as to why I was still alive. And then I felt it. My breathing hitches. The sensation of cold grasping my body combined with my own anxiety. I couldn't think. I was hyperventilating. The numbing cold was unbearable. It felt like death. Come on. Keep it together, damn it. I could only imagine there was a nightmare or potentially the delusion of my fracturing psyche. All I can think to do is repeat the bits of information I knew to keep it together in this strange place. I pull the tattered remnants of my lab coat together, trying to find some kind of warmth as I feel reality return to normal speed again. I can't fight off the cold dread any longer, and I lose consciousness. That's going to be a hard landing. Land on something soft. Why am I referencing really specific Reinhardt callouts like anyone? 
Congrats to the one guy. Enjoy. I stir. I hear the strange sounds of... birds? I wake up and launch myself up onto my feet, immediately regretting my choice of actions. Lightheaded, I fall to my knees, using my hands to stabilize myself on the ground. Trying once again, only this time much slower, I stand up and look around, confused. I'm in the clearing of a forest. Seeing the sun in the sky, shining through the gap in the canopy above me was comforting. The nightmare of being trapped in that cold space, which had felt so real, now felt like an illusion. However, that cold place, was any of it real? And if so, why can't I remember why I'm in these woods? Panic once again sets in as I climb up on the bank of the crater. Crater, okay. I feel the grass pressing up against my skin, a nice break from the feeling of nothingness that surrounded me before. How in the world? So you have an impact crater somehow, that's alarming. The air is cold, if not unbearable. But given the current state of my clothes, I don't... They don't do much to keep me warm. Okay. I need to get my bearings. I examine my glasses, checking the lens for damage. Lens with an E. Ow. Ow. Too much moving around. Too much moving around. <laughs> Making horrible mistakes in the meat space. Damn. There's a slight crack. Oop. But I reckon I can still use these. Oh, wait. Is that to a timer? Does it auto proceed? No. No. I tricked my brain. I, I think I might have just somehow eaten an input, and so I, I got a whole head cannon about it. I begin to I begin to slap each of my pockets, eventually finding the hard rectangular shape in my right pocket. My phone. Thank God. I turn it on, ignoring the cracked screen until I notice the black blotches on parts of it. Damn. You really took a beating from that fall. I must have landed on it when I was in that hole. Could a slip really do that much damage? How hard did I hit the ground? Before my mind can race further, I decide to check out if my phone's apps are still usable. No signal. Fuck. Yeah, that's gonna get useless real fast. I take a look around me, getting my bearings before heading in the direction I believed was north. With some luck, I could find a vantage point where I could get a signal or see a building nearby. Maybe a cabin? Or if I was lucky, I'd find how far I strayed from the town. Or if I was really lucky, I'd find a dorm and colleagues who could explain to me what the hell just happened. Shortly followed by their expression on how worried they were and questions of where the hell I'd been. But to my, dis but to my dismay, there was none of that. Yeah, that's not normal. Uh, congratulations, you're in Los Angeles. If you wish upon a star... Listen, I'm just kidding, there's not- there's not this much green in Southern California. There- not- not before or after a mankind. It's just not- the water don't- does not naturally exist here. <laughs> not here, I'm not in Southern California. I'm in California, but anyway. What in the world is going on here? My panicked voice does nothing to hide my timidness as I sink back against the tree, fighting to catch my breath. Okay, calm down. I look down to the town in front of me. There's no way I'm chancing staying out in the woods for a night in this place, wherever that may be. To avoid falling over, I carefully make my way down the hill. The woodland brush is thick, the trees are large and overgrown. Evidence of the rich life they led was, situa was situated in these lands, providing cover for the shrubbery underneath to grow and develop into a lively ecosystem. It was rather peaceful, save for my own panting cutting across the sounds of nature. I could see my breath appear in front of me with each thick exultation. 
it was a reminder of just how cold it truly is. I really need to get some, something warmer. These tattered sleeves were not going to last in these conditions. It was only a matter of time before the sun would set, allowing the night to take over and drop the and dropping these harsh temperatures even more. I gotta move. Otherwise I'll freeze. I exit the tree line and find a well-worn path that leads to the gate I saw from the hillside. I continue on with my walk. I notice the city become closer and closer. Ears! It's gonna get so weird so fast for you. <laughs> Unless you're already a furry in which you're gonna lose your entire goddamn mind. Doop doop. Everyone's barefoot in this universe looks like. They got little... I don't think they're digitigrade, but they got little, like, nub feet that don't look like shoes. Although some of them just like they look like standing on, like... I, I don't know. They could be digitigrade, actually. That would explain why they don't, the feet don't stick out that much. The few shops and stalls they have outside these walls seem abandoned. Oh. That's not what I'm seeing at all. <laughs> no one occupies them, and there's no business out front, yet their equipment remains placed. Weird. Seeing no one at the gate, I press onward, walking through the old stonework. It's rather impressive to see such a creation. That's when my eyes turn wide as I see some of the pedestrians walking on the streets. Or maybe the pedestrians should like fade in now or something. They were tall and hairy? With tails? Tails miles per hour? I. <laughs> My panicked expression draws attention from a beast who's not two meters away from me. Gods of the realm! What is that? I- Gods! Gods, come quick! I immediately walk- I immediately back away as I see a crowd form. Mothers holding back their children. Men giving me disgusted looks. And young lads who are simply puzzled. I'm surprised how quickly our narrator's able to identify the gender roles and ages of everything when he's in such an alien setting. Oi, beast! You better have those disgusted paws yours raised by the cat of three or I'm gonna gut you. <laughs> Good voice, nailed it, perfect. <laughs> I, I let out a gasp as I finally get a good look at the beast's faces. Muzzles, long fur, and in the case of a na- in this case a nasty, intimidating snarl. Not unlike that of a... a wolf. As if on instinct, I follow their commands in a somewhat ironic scenario and quickly raise my hands to look less threatening. I watch them slowly press in, walking towards me in a driven way. Whoa, please, I I I'm not here to cause trouble. I I'm just lost and looking for... Doesn't look like we give a shit who we're looking for. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 so fucking stupid. Why do I? Why? I just. It's like, this is guard voice. Here we go. More work? Uh, is this offensive? Is this offensive to the English? That I've, I've watched fantasy stuff. <laughs> On your knees, freak. You go into the dungeon. <laughs> I need to stop. I, free, I freeze up. Honestly, scared of what these. These men, these these beasts are going to do to me. Uh, hey! Before I can say any more, I'm interrupted by the loud, thundering sound of feet hitting the ground in rapid succession. I look to my right, and within seconds, a, f a flash of orange streams past my eye. A slim figure quickly jumps into the air and delivers a swift kick to one of the guard's faces, sending him back away from me. The other guard goes to rush this unknown person. He quickly presses his feet hard into the ground and launches himself backwards away from his pursuer and to my direction. I was gonna say, you said orange. I don't know if that'd be an orange blur given his his makeup. The, the orange is actually pretty obscured, actually. That's when I see that his feet were no... His feet were of no ordinary human, but instead a set of paws different from the men who tried to arrest me. They're smaller, and a different color. I thought we were about to pant down to his feet. I'm like, they're, 
And like that would be that'd be so much work to make feet on every sprite. I take this opportunity to look up his slender frame, but not too much, because visual novel characters are just waist up. His long legs lead, uh, lead up to a muscular but heavily protected torso, a free flowing tail that sits at his behind, and to top it off, a face that I could barely even get a glimpse of, despite being primarily seen as an orange blur. I can see two pointed ears blazing in color, glorious like the sun itself as it contrasted the shroud. You are in love with this guy immediately. Listen, friend. I have no idea who you are, but I suggest you book it. He spoke quickly, perfectly intelligible, but with a sense of urgency to let me know I was in true danger if I stayed here any longer. Before I can even think about making a break for it, his arm falls down to his side and grabs something off his belt. He raises it to the sky and throws it to the ground with considerable force. Is it going to be a smoke bomb? Flashbang. Skadoosh. It releases some sort of thick layer of smoke that covers the open space in seconds. Run! Think about running, runt! I'll make sure that whatever in hell I was going to do to you earlier is ten times worse. <laughs> it's, it's bad, it's really bad. Fear quickly sinks in as I realize I was faced with a choice that could put my life in serious danger. Do I follow this unknown stranger in the hopes of securing shelter? Maybe even finding my way back home? Or is it better to stay put and do what the guards ask of me? Avoid putting a target on my back. Is this going to be a choice? Uh? What should I do? It is a choice. Let's lose. Fail state. Let's go. Turn yourself in. This can't go well at all. Or he just rescues you. I don't know. For a moment, I consider following the stranger. But an overwhelming sense of fear keeps me grounded after hearing the guard's threats. I decide that my best course of action would be is to stay and raise my arms up in submission. Ooh woo. The force the fox gives me a disappointing a disappointing glance. Disappointed glance, right? Before it quickly before he qu but quickly turns tail and dashes off in the direction of an open alleyway. It's a marvel watching him take the form of an orange bolt and dash away effortlessly. As the smoke clears, I hear a strong stream of footsteps come up behind me as I'm tackled to the floor. It's it's hilariously anticlimactic to have someone be accosted by a group of people, have someone, ha a dashing hero, come in and rescue you with a smoke bomb, and then you just stay. <laughs> it just none of that taken none of that information or new context and just stand still and get arrested anyway. Ah! I let out a pointed, uh, a pained grunt as the wolf dominates me, Uwu. He positions his hands behind me and ties them in a rope. Hey! I surrendered! Ah, uh, shut up, Runt. You really think you're gonna, we're gonna go easy on you after that whole display? You're one of those bastard Bjorfs, aren't you? Bjorfers? Bjorfers? I'm sure it's not a J. I'm sure it's pronounced as a soft J. But, damn. Biofers, Biof, Biofers, Bie, which O is that? Mm, mm. Biofers. Okay, so I don't know what I don't know what it's pronounced either. Or is this a pronunciation guide? He's saying it how it's pronounced. Is that a trick? Are we doing that? Biofers, probably actually, maybe. What is that? Gods, untrained and stupid. He pushes me in the direction of the open square. The other guard slowly approaches and takes position behind me, raising his spear. I don't know what any of you are talking about. I don't know who you people are. I don't know what a bow for <laughs> bow for these nuts. I don't know what a bow for whatever the hell that is. I, I don't even know where I am. Despite my persistence, I'm ignored. The spear is lunged at me threateningly, so I made aware to move forward. You think they just drag me? Silence, prisoner. You've been warned of the consequences if you continue your current actions. We are not opposed to carrying through with them. <laughs> I'm just getting worse. I'm drifting further and further away from anything I had before. On the suspicion of being a threat to the kingdom as either a spy or thief. <laughs> You're under arrest. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. 
I like one okay line at best once. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> My mind is racing and I'm worried about what's going to happen to me. I'm shouting from... The shouting from these two begins to draw a crowd and I look around as many different people begin to stare. Some are cheering, others looking in disgust, most of them at me. But I see a few hateful eyes in the crowd staring daggers at the guards. I watch as these... I watch as these people then begin to scream, and come to my defense. Hey, leave him alone. There's no way he's any of those. If he's trained like you suspect, why would he panic and surrender? You can't keep treating people like this. Oh, uh, shut up there. It's a wolf now instead of guard. Shut up, the lot of you. The gut. Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's another other other wolf. Never mind. Ah, uh, shut up, the lot of ya. The guards here are trying to keep us all safe. That's right. You don't know what this freak, what this freak is up to. Is it this? Is, is this on racial lines? Are the wolves supporting the guards and nobody else does? Because they were they were civilians, ambiguous civilians, and then they were specifically wolves. And the guards are wolves. I look on in shock as I watch a fight break out. C citizens shoving and pushing waiting for the first punch to be thrown. But before it can come to a head, another heavy stream of footsteps cuts across the square and break up the interaction. All right, that's enough. Everyone here disperse or I'll personally be firing all of you for disturbing the peace. A very large and portly wolf makes his way across the open square, walking slowly over to me. Janal nude, not not jal, Janal. Oh boy. <laughs> also, large boy, very wide. Janal, fuck, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't. I have to give up. It screeches out two names, and I hear the guards shift behind me, standing to attention. Oh, Jnal and Nude, or whoever names hard pronunciation, are the two. Uh, fuck! Are the two guards. Huskar Skjold. Uh, it's good to see you, sir. Uh, how are you this fine? I've given up on the stupid voice. <laughs> Silence, Dalfur. I watch as the taller of the two guards uh, hushes himself and he goes back to a stance of respect. Begging me for months to finally let you have some time in the inner city. We'll be good, sir. We'll do our rounds and report anything suspicious, sir. And if we find any of those Briofer, we'll be sure to take them down. There's a long pause. And I let you. I thought you two were bright enough and ready to take charge of a situation like this. To both impress and fulfill your responsibilities. What do you do instead? The wolf's heads raised down in shame. You lost yourselves to your emotions when confronted with a potential invader and let panic spread throughout the district. You allowed yourselves to be outsmarted by the very thief you assured me you'd find and arrest. He looks at me. And you embarrassed yourselves by taking out your frustrations on an enemy who already surrendered, nearly causing a riot. Your actions affect all of us when you're on patrol, so act the way you've been trained. They utter a soft apology and hang their heads low. Report to the barracks and let them know I want Dag and Feldman patrolling the sector for the rest of the day. As for you two, we'll discuss your redeployment after I drop this creature off. CG. Yep, I am just, I'm a human in a lab coat, and I'm just stuck in this fantasy world with whatever clothes I threw on right before I got here. I don't know how much he had to worry about freezing. He did have layers. Like, he's wearing uh, a shirt and trousers, and he has a lab coat for, like, an extra layer. It is, like, it's got holes in it, but, like, it's it's, it's some insulation. This place is, I, don't know, I don't know how cold this place looks, but it's not snowing, <laughs> at least. He grabs me by the shoulder and pulls me over to him. I'm both intimidated and impressed by his strength. Dismissed. I watch as the wolves slowly walk away, 
and I'm left with this portly stranger. I don't trust you. That's not really much of a declaration at this point. You're, I'm literally a prisoner. But submitting like that and allowing us to carry out our arrest despite those boys' attitudes is a very good start. Is this a route choice? Or is it like... Do you, the fact that a, a sprite character was introduced after the choice makes me think this might be like a more significant choice. I, like, I didn't know if it was going to be a bad end or if I, or if it would like wrap back in on itself and you just get rescued by the, the fox anyway. This could be very different. Well, you speak, don't you? I've snapped away from my thoughts, realizing I should respond. Oh, my apologies. Uh, yes, I could speak. I see. How do you speak our tongue, Erlander? Hmm? Does he know what I am? Um, I don't actually know. There are some words you say that I don't understand, but... Like the one you just said, and the one the other wolf said before. We've said a lot of words. <laughs> You're gonna have to narrow it down. I was under the impression you were speaking English. English? Not sure what moon speak, you utter scholarly, but that's a funny word. I humor him with an, out an awkward chuckle before asking. Then what language do you speak? We speak the words of the realm. Yeah, okay. the language. Just the, the common, or like, uh, I think in Astro they just say, they just call it like the language or whatever, like they don't even name it. My ancestors have been speaking this way for decades, but our language has evolved with the travel of my people. Perhaps we've settled in lands of your home, and that's why you pass the, why you have the ability. Or you're a wise spy who's young for his profession. He smirks at me, and let out another awkward chuckle, before cutting myself off with a sharp exhale. Ah! I look down and only see the damaged state of my legs and knees from the altercation. The sudden pain in my body is a clear indicator that, through my chat with Large Wolf, my adrenaline must be fading away. Yes, that doesn't look too good. He grabs me again and puts me in puts himself behind me, holding my bound wrists. Walk the way I tell you to, to and we'll be at the at the lake near before you know it. What's that? Someone smart enough to treat the injured and heal ailments. Oh. Do you not have those where you come from, Erlander? Uh, yes. We just have another name for them. And what might that be? Doctor? Doctors. Ha! Another funny word. I've never met other cultures before. <laughs> we begin uh, to walk through the city streets. <laughs> ah, sorry. Like, once you start doing voices, things just shift around. You're like, cool, fuck me, fuck me and my sinuses, apparently, <laughs> all of a sudden. It's quiet. I look around at my surroundings. I was under the impression that this would usually be a bustling market square. However... The various stalls and shops were practically abandoned, despite their full inventory of stock. I look up at the larger buildings that accompanied the storefronts. They seem closed up, but every so often I see an occasional window cracked open ajar for, uh, to look out onto the street. I'm assuming it, would, it was to get a glimpse of this stranger walking their streets, or to give the townsfolk who tried to defend me the opportunity to spy on the wolf next to me. Try to pay them no mind. Can't exactly blame them for their curiosity. Likewise, I haven't exactly seen anything like you guys before either. It's nerve-wracking to see an area that should be dominated with people social socializing be so empty. I can hear the wind pass through the alleyways with no noise to butter its echoes. Buffer its echoes. <laughs> butter its echoes. <laughs> oh. Don't tell me you're from that Catland shithole. Catland? The western continent? He gives me a look, both annoyed and surprised by my lack of knowledge. Uh, no. Not from there. Don't even know where that is. Can't personally recommend it. If, if that's true, I'm glad to know you haven't gotten any ties with them. 
He looks like he's taking a mental note as he strolls forward. Skjold, right? That's how you say it? Certainly not a bad first attempt. Your ske- <laughs> Needs some work, but overall pretty good. I don't- It's not helping me though. <laughs> it's not helping me at all. Oh. Alright. What was that other word you used to address- That you used to address you? Huskarl? He looks at a- He lets out a chuckle. Now that was a crap attempt. No. That word is a title. Huskarl. It's- a word you use for generals and leaders who have certain responsibilities. Oh, that's interesting. Guessing your responsibilities are managing guards? And overall safety of the city? I'm guessing that fight with those two made it pretty obvious, huh? He lets out a sigh throughout the smirk. They're not bad boys, you know. I'd be inclined to disagree with how my interaction went. I looked down at my swollen knees. At my swollen knees swell from. Mm, yep, that, that could, this could do a redo. <laughs> this line could do a redo. I looked down at my knees swell. Mm. Yeah, I would just get rid of the word swell, I guess. Just give up on that one. Or. I'd probably write. I, I, would, I looked down at my knees swelling from when I was tackled or something. Which is neither of the options, really, of what is kind of here. They're young. And don't get me wrong. I'm not that old myself. And men in their position don't have that excuse. But they're being forced to grow up way too fast in these times. He hangs his head low, turning away from me as he continues walking. Might I ask why? He looks back at me, tilting his head as if contemplating what he should say. Oxheimer has quite the rocky start since my ancestors settled here. Oxheimer? Close, but... Wait, have you ever heard of this kingdom? I'd be lying if I said I did. Originally, my people were from the north. Harsh, icy conditions that made day-to-day -day life a struggle. Don't get me wrong. We weren't any less advanced than the other kingdoms in our, stati in our status. But it was decided that by our then-king that we needed to flee south with dreams of greener pastures. That's when we found this woodland village. I'm sure you saw the remnants outside of the old town before you passed the gate. We settled into this town and slowly began to use our resources to build and improve the land. Now that he mentions it, I do remember briefly seeing some disheveled wooden shacks and buildings decorating the main gate. Yeah, there's definitely like something outside of the main gate too. Uh, like, there was like a little village out in the trees, I think. They did look rather neglected compared to the houses inside the city walls. However, when a nation moves, it invites challenge. We've had notable pushback from both the civilians and rival kingdoms that had kept their eyes on this land since before I was born. As a result, all our soldiers and politicians are on standby to deal with any rising conflicts. It's got a lot of people on edge, especially the younger wolves among our ranks. As he finishes, he we round a corner and I watch shadows engulf the street from the settling sun. Huh. Must have lost track of time, reminiscing about history. He lets out a chuckle, slumping his head as he goes down an alleyway. I follow him. But we're not gonna follow him, psych. can't taunt me with... I guess I, should, I could save. Oop. That's a little, that was a little creepy looking, the words faded. Load. Oop. There we go. I don't usually have the opportunity to uh, check out a branching path this early in a let's try, and it seems like we should feature that a bit in our preview. So I want to see what, what the other path does. Follow the unknown stranger. Acting on sheer impulse, I decide to follow this stranger. Regardless of the guard's threats, I'd much rather trust a somewhat friendly face trying to give me an out. I'm broken away from my thoughts as I watch him turn on his heel and begin sprinting. I take this as my cue to run, and I break into a sprint to chase after my rescuer. Who are you? 
Name's Fraser. Sort of an outlaw in these parts. What the hell is going on here? My lungs are on fire, my speech interrupted by deep breaths as I, as I round the corner after corner. My pass, After passing what looks like a market square, we reach a large strip. I'll hazard a guess you did something they didn't like. How is he not even panting? God, I'm out of shape. Does walking through a gate count? Oh, ho, ho. that's a big no-no. Outsiders with no residency or business inside the walls need some sort of woven companion to use the main gates. So what the hell? Why the hell is everyone a wolf here anyway? What the hell? What the hell are you too? Hey, speak for yourself. And we're not all wolves. I take a bit of offense to that. He lets out a chuckle as he continues to make light word, like work of at our out of our sprint. And that's a stupid question. Do you really not know where you are? Look, save the questions for later. All you need to know now is that I'm trying to save your arse. Now. As, as the sounds of footsteps increase, Fraser rounds a final corner and grabs me by the arm, jumping into a hidden alleyway. Nope, there he is. <laughs> Very split perspective immediately. Oh, we're seeing a lot more of our goofy character now. So we're similar heights. We're not completely dwarfed by everyone. But we are once again in a universe where all the anthros are larger. I think about how... This is like super tangent, but like... Ad Astra introduces these really specific rumors about simians and primate races and so on. And we never meet one. But they're known for not being able to swim but they're known for being having like incredible upper body strength or something. It'd be funny to have an anthro setting where the human is like unusually strong compared to all the anthro characters. But that's not exactly the fantasy for a lot of it, but <laughs> like they all have like every specific anthro has like specific talents, but massive weaknesses like actual animals do. Like humans are these terrifying creatures with upper body strength and the ability to marathon run. With quite a bit of ease, he pulls me into his lap. I look at him, puzzled, but he gives me a look of reassurance. This was both to break my fall and to simultaneously cover my mouth. We sit like that for a good five minutes as the sounds of footsteps pass us by and slowly begin to fade away, being replaced with the humble sounds of an active market. What is this drain? Just kind of back here. Is this a toilet? Is this like a back alley toilet? Birds chirping, sounds of sweeping, the day-to-day -day take, uh, takes of st stock being shifted around in exchange for the clashing sounds of coins being passed from buyer to seller. I think this is a, I think this is basically just a, st a street drain, I guess. So there's like some kind of, and I'm just, I'm just wondering about like medieval like city design when you actually do invest in this kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't know all the rules. Well. I'm ready to move if you are. I know I'm comfy, but we can't afford to sit here all day. I watch him, and he's, and he's looking up at the sky. It's gonna be night soon anyway. Yeah, uh, we can move. Wait, night already? How can you tell? It's the winter season, lad. Temperature drops quicker, and then by extension so does the sun. I give it an hour, two at the most. That's not the causality of that scenario, but I... Huh. That's actually pretty impressive. I feel so lost right now. What even are you? Not to be rude, but I... And I know I'm probably going to ask you a dozen times more, but I've never seen something like you... Like... Ever. Uh... Well, I'm... Human. He slowly gets up and begins stretching. He pops a squat in front of me to properly stretch his legs before standing back up and doing the same with his arms and torso. Human. 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 Can't say I've ever heard of it. You've got a name? My face drops, thinking he might actually know something about me. I sigh and answer him. My name is Bryn. Bryn, huh? It's a pleasure to meet you. But let's get back to business. 
My ears prick up, and I immediately lift my head. I have some friends outside of town. Good buddies of mine who run a tavern in a more open area that isn't infested with guards. Grim was a scholar. He did a lot of traveling before he ended up here. What exactly is here? You must be but you must be dumber than a bag of rocks, huh? I give him a frustrated stare. He simply snickers and sna and stares back to me with an amused smirk before letting out a sigh. So it sounds like Fraser takes you to this this traveler to see if he's ever heard of a human and the guard probably takes you to the doctor as a pretense to see if he's ever seen your species before. It honestly depends on who you ask. Ask the wolves and they'll tell you that you're in the proud kingdom of Oxheimer. Bastard invaders. Though if you ask any self-respecting person, they'll tell you that, that we, we are in the gracious land of Caledonia. It seems, like a sore, it seems like a sore subject for him to talk about, so I decide not to push for details on the matter. Okay. So what's the plan? If we're moving, where are we going? Well, we need to get out of the city's walls. The way they see it, a possible spy or an outlaw of significance gave their elite guards a slip, and are currently running rampant. He lets out a frustrated sigh and walks over to the entrance of the alleyway, tucking his head back in after seeing many armed guards patrolling the streets. Okay. We step out and walk the streets. We're as good as dead. Doesn't help your dead giveaway with those weird... pieces of attire. What do you mean weird? You've never seen a shirt before? Bryn. Bryn, 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 Bryn. You're conspicuous in human society. A lab coat isn't normal in human society. Anyone seeing a guy in a lab coat would be like, what? Like the moment you're like out in the market? I'm out at the farmer's market with my lab coat. <laughs> Not one like that, no. It's tight around the neck, reducing its breathability. It's thin and tears easily, making it impractical in colder climates. You got a quick assessment. I guess you were like literally hugging me to you. Not to mention it looks downright horrible. The color looks terrible on you. What? You jerk. You you literally got dressed in the dark, Bryn. You're gonna get defensive over the random shirt that you wore that was, that's not even been described, I don't think. But, uh... Although, if anything, the lab coat actually might... look more... It might look closer to attire here. Like, a lab coat looks weird in human society, out of its context. But it is this big, draping, like, coarser thing that might actually look more normal than a t-shirt, of all things. So from, from most angles, but it's white. Feeling slightly offended, I'm ready to go off, go off on the fox before he shushes me. Uh, shut up, dumbass. You're trying to get us caught. My face goes bright red as I realize the detriment we're in. That's when I watch him approach me. He puts his hand on his hand on his back, and I assume he's going to pull another tool from one of his many belts. What's a smoke bomb gonna do for us here? My thoughts are interrupted as I see him pull a dagger. Panicked, I back away as he spins it in his paw at the right at at a right at a the right angle. Oh, calm down, you big Jess. If I wanted to put if I wanted to put you out of your misery, I would have done it already. He moves quickly down the alley, and I follow him. Below us are a series of tunnels that run into the kingdom. They're used, as, they're used by my allies. We're just, <laughs> a little trusting, honestly, to give this away this quickly, but I guess we were accosted by the guards. Just have to hope the guards never smart enough to just fake do that to trick you. He pauses, raising the dagger close to my throat, causing me to go wide-eyed as I feel my body freeze up. You've given me no reason to distrust you, but should I ever find out you're responsible for the discovery of these tunnels that would put me and my friends in any danger? He plunges the knife forward and I flinch. I will not hesitate to send you to your god. He spins the knife around so its handle is facing me and uses his other paw to offer me a hand up. I'd apologize for scaring you, but, well, I had to make sure you were taking me seriously. I take his paw. Fuck yeah, I took you seriously. 
I was gonna piss myself. He lets out a snicker, shrugging his shoulders as he walks towards the gate. That's that's thinking though, right? He doesn't hear that. I let out a sigh as he leads me to the entrance hatch. He plunges his knife into a gap and lifts it, popping the grate from its hole, and pushes it to the side. I watch in awe as the fox somehow manages to lift the heavy metal grate with ease. I look down at my arms, trying to judge how big the difference is. The difference in our muscle strength might, uh, blah blah blah. How big, just how big the difference in our muscle strength is. My eyes begin to wander as I look up his body, only to discover that his arms weren't the only large thing there. <laughs> his broad shoulders perfectly accentuate those arms connected to his slim torso, the angle from behind giving me a full view. His newly lowered cloak gives me a revealing glance at his figure. Unfortunately, that's when my eyes settle on Fraser's rear. Unfortunately? It's sculpted, pleasantly plump, and backed out slightly to the point you could see a perfect curvature of his rump. His cloak is, once again, leaving little to the imagination. You know my eyes are up here, right? He flicks his, he he flicks his head and stares at me dead-eyed. Just imagining he's doing the fucking Jacko pose, but looking backwards through his legs. <laughs> my, you know, my eyes are here. <laughs> Just the most distracting possible pose. I feel my face go red, turning multiple shades darker from when the fox had originally caught me out. Though, could he blame me? After everything that's happened, it's honestly nice to have something that, like that practically shoved in my face. Confirmed gay. I, uh... Sorry, I, I was just uh, admiring. No, I mean, I mean, daddy, I mean, daddy, daddy, I mean, daddy, I mean, I mean, I mean, daddy, daddy, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, I mean, I mean, daddy. <laughs> there, I did, I did the meme. Congratulations, everybody. Analyzing, no, sh I, I mean, mate. He raises his paw and, sh and snaps his fingers to, to pull me out of my stuttering. Calm it down. You think you're the first person I've caught staring at this old thing. He switches his tail to remove the cloak cover for a brief second, where I do get a sneaky peek at his tail. Listen, I don't really care what you got going on, but right now, focus on the job before you're on pleasure, okay? Now come on, we've got sewers to move through. Gross. You do it a few times and you get used to it too. He instructs me to go first. I approach and sit down to press my body forward. I fall onto the ladder, securing my feet, and hands begin to climb down, listening above for the fox. I'm just thinking about how euphemistically the other guard has talked about, like, yeah, when your kingdom moves around, you face challengers. Crazy. Like, you know, the indigenous people of that land. <laughs> but it seems like the setup here is that we have a branching narrative where uh, you specifically get to play both sides of a conflict in two, two different playthroughs, and, they've had, and they're developed separately, or at least that seems to be the implication so far. I fall into the ladder, securing my feet and hands, and begin to climb down, listening above for the fox. He slowly follows, popping the cover back into the correct place to conceal our pathway of escape. I, I gotta say, it's a little weird, but if they ever discovered that... If they ever discover our, our tunnels, when the tunnels are just the known sewers, maybe we'll transition to secret tunnels from the sewers? I imagine the sewers aren't a secret, and that they're probably functioning. So, uh, Frazier, where are we headed exactly? Old hideout of mine. I'm gonna try and, and get you some new attire for uh, to help you hide in plain sight. Then we'll see if I can... Sneak us out of the east gate and get into Old Town. Maybe try and pass you off as some weird naked mole rat. That sounds disgusting. Speaking of disgusting, watch your step. I begin to wonder what he means as I'm still firmly on the ladder, only to feel my foot not connect with the next step. You... had such clear instructions. <laughs> Whoa! This is a lot of sewer. This is thoroughly built. I'm, temp I'm always shocked by how big sewers are just in real life, too. Because uh, it's, it's a surreal concept, but having it be this built out in a place this old is also like its own surprise. 
I, although this isn't necessarily a period piece it's an alternate world that resembles fantasy settings I'm tempted to let out a scream as I fall and I'm stopped by a splash of water covering my pants as my butt hits the ground oh god what the hell is this fuck my ass hurts how did I, I'm just I'm just Bryn, Bryn, Bryn. How is this not your every fear? How is this not everything you were worried about happening when we came down here? Like, how are you not being incredibly careful and worried about what what's going to happen going in the sewer? I, I don't, I don't know how you get careless in the sewer. This is exactly what I'd be terrified about happening as a splash in any context. I look at the fox snicker as he effortlessly hops down while I prop myself up. That'd be sewer water, my furless friend. What? Wait. Really? Ugh, this is gross. Ew, 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 ew. He burst into laughter, holding his gut while watching me quickly step through the water and back onto the paved pathway. Oh, gods above, that, that is hilarious. Congratulations, you just failed the romance arc. <laughs> He's always going to imagine you just plunged into the sewage now. I throw him a grimaced look. Pouting as I start walking ahead, desperate to get out of this god's forsaken place. Alright, pup. Your hilarious misfortune aside, keep going straight, and we should be at the turnoff for the East Market soon. If I've timed this right, the sun should be setting, and the stall should be closing, so hopefully I can nab you some fresh attire. Gods, you stink. I know, asshole. How do you think I feel, short ass? I'm the one who's got a better nose than you. How do you know that? Wait, how, wait, 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 wait. Fraser, how do you, how do you know that? About humans versus foxes? Unless you just have a better nose than everybody here? Like, do you have a better nose than wolves? You're, you're making a leap here, buddy. This is being a little too meta here. To be fair, he has a point. Not that I'd ever admit it. Especially to him. I mean, you would know. You would expect a fox to have a better sense of smell, being a human, whence foxes exist in other forms, but... Time passes in this dingy walkway. There's been no trace of the sun except for the faint cracks of light escaping through the holes that covered access to the sewers, as well as the occasional storm drain. I could feel it start to, pl start to play annoyance on my mind. With the runaway from those pesky guards, now the long walk here, I can feel my energy being drained. However, as if he could pick up on my emotion, he spoke. Not much longer now, Bryn. I look, up, I look up to see the dimly lit shade of green that was his hood being covered by darkening shades of orange from the setting sun. Hey, Phrase? We're at nicknames already. Answer me something, would you? With honesty? I'll do my best. No promises, though. I can see his body tense ever so slightly, as if he was just readjusting his attire after that exhausting walk. Seems like it had shifted his armor into an uncomfortable position. Why did you save me? That's quite a loaded question, but not an impossible one to answer. He makes a sharp turn and proceeds to walk down a new pathway. In truth, it's because of the bastards in power. They've been in control of this place since before I was born. While I won't deny the credit that is due to the architects that designed the buildings of the city, I will deny the idea that the, individu the individuals in current power are, are nothing but entitled, self-centered, egotistical maniacs. The rightful citizens of this kingdom have been left in squalor and hardship, stuck with constant taxes, harassment, and the overall sentiment that our lives are nothing but commonplace to serve the higher-ups. They just wish to live a lavish lifestyle without thinking of the consequences that we pay will be paid forward by the men, women, and children beneath them. I'm taken aback by the strong conviction that evades the vulpine's... I don't, I'm still in the voice, whoops. <laughs> I'm taken aback by the strong conviction that evades the vulpine's maw. I'm gonna go on a crazy, crazy, absolutely insane leap here, in that it is one of the most common points of origin anyway, and everyone, and everyone out this is true for almost everyone, but this guy especially, this guy especially watched the Disney, the Disney Robin Hood movie with the fox protagonist. Because, <laughs> like, that's, like, that's specifically, I mean, come on. I'm taken aback by the strong conviction that escapes the vulpine's maw. I'm immediately intrigued to know more about what he's talking about. 
I know your time here has been short, but people like me have been experiencing this kind of harassment for you face today for years, and we've never had a chance to combat it. The lucky few that are able to get into the nicer parts of the city are still scrutinized by the laws of the invaders of this land as a result. This country needs individuals that will challenge these notions and do what's truly best for all the people of this land. I am one of those individuals. I work with some, with some people in one, in one of the inns on the old town. Oh, is that, that's going to be the, the the sort of dilapidated town that they, they mentioned earlier. So it's currently populated by the locals. <clears throat> I look out for the vulnerable and supply the needy with the necessary items that they need to get by. And you, my friend, just happen to be my most recent rescue. He shoots me a wink, and I can't help but blush at his flirtatious gaze, prompting me to let out a nervous chuckle. Man, you must really have something going for you, Bryn, if you're getting, like, flirted with while covered in sewage. Like, you're, you're real diamond in the rough at the moment. <laughs> well, it's most well, it's most appreciated, Fraser. Thank you. Or should I say Renard? Uh, he, the, he, he quickens his pace as he takes the final turn and I follow him around the corner. Say, can you tell me more about the There'll be a time where I can recall the tales of the snowball land from years past another time. For now, we've reached my hideout, so let's focus on getting ourselves out of this place and mayhap I'll tell you some over a hearty drink. His initial frustration has was wiped away by the possibility of sharing a drink, something he we could eat, certainly use after a day like today. However, it, his frustration? Is it my frustration? However, my thoughts are interrupted by uh, as the fox informs me that we've reached the end of the tunnel system. So, if I've timed this right, we should, be, we should have the cover of nightfall to conceal our presence. Now listen, when we get up there, I want you to stay right behind me. Use my cloak tails as cover as we approach. Now, we're aiming for one of the abandoned houses close to the East Gate Marketplace. I'm going to stick you in there, and you're going to keep out of sight. And what are you going to do while I'm doing all this? I'll be, ena I'll be enacting stage two of my escape plan. I'm going to head down to the closed closing market stalls and see if I can't find you some kind of shawl or cloak to wrap up wrap around that pretty little head of yours. If I'm lucky, I might be able to steal you some kind of garment to replace those ratty rags. I watch his eyes look me up and down. But now I can tell my... By now, I can tell that my clothes are on their last legs, and doing little to provide comfort and insulation. My shoes are no better. I can feel the discomfort from my feet, ca from my feet caused by the ripped canvas-style material. You brought the worst shoe. You brought some of the only shoes that would be at risk of disintegrating in this situation. And I don't know if they're going to make shoes that fit you here. So that's a bad time for your entire future of walking. You're going to you're going to be so you're going to have to you're going to be the only human that develops calluses in modern day. Yeah, I'm kind of in need of some. But don't go about pilfering every store in, in the lot. Oh, oh, more we're having morals today, Bryn. There must be some good people in there somewhere. Hard at work to make an honest living. I wouldn't want to take all of that away from them just by being needy. I would just, I mean, there must be some good people? That's a, making a low estimate, it's a little mean. The fox seems genuinely taken aback by the answer. As if my, as if my choice in his, act is bleh. As if my choice in his actions was the complete opposite of what he expected me to say. Nevertheless, he did seem amused by my take but didn't want to let it show. Turning away from me, he moved swiftly up the ladder to pop the grate cover out of its socket. As I reach the final step, he extends his paw for me to grab onto and pull me out up and onto my feet. That's probably where I stop, because it's where we both kind of reach our destination in both routes, being a bit equal or something. So it's probably a decent intro, but that, that's, that's, very, that's very interesting to get a split that quickly. It's also decently paced where they're building up the setting without stopping to exposit for 10 minutes straight necessarily. 
and we get and we also get the opportunity for split perspectives between the two sides so anything where he we hear is up to dispute which is my favorite thing is when people have incentive to lie to you or misrepresent the truth on some level and makes the reality of the truth more interesting like i talked about this in the ad astra essay where amicus is lying to you throughout the intro of the game and that makes it more that, that adds the intrigue of like what the fuck is happening why is it happening where are we going what does this mean and that makes it more interesting to just build into that stuff also just like the arts on point this all, this all like visual novels are leveling up it's funny uh going all the way back in time to echo like whenever we start a route and seeing like how it's kind of it's a little ramshackle with, with the uh the warped screenshots and stuff and then even over the course of that game the production is like leveling up and new tricks are coming into play with the phone and other things and the uh the backgrounds and then we get to these games like this and remember the flowers and so on and you're just seeing these games like really step it up it's, it's very impressive Definitely the, the the big leg work is writing. So like, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying art's easy. I'm saying that you can uh, you can find people to do the art if you have the uh, the funds for it or or the friends, <laughs> uh, and you can like split effort between enough people that it can get done. But like, a lot of the uh, I, don't, I, I did not think out my point enough to actually embark on this, I guess. <laughs> so I don't have enough of a clear podcast topic right now. But uh, the more people can really like like get their stories out and structure where they're going to go and have a clever idea and framing device and figure out what to do with that. Like this like this one has this, this split thing going on. Remember the Flowers has its like timeline thing going on. Uh, and if you can get the text done, like you can... Start getting these done. I think text is the primary thing that holds a lot of these games from getting them done in the first place. That and some of these are solo projects. Like I think Dawn Tide is drawn and written by the same person, which is a hell of a way to get stuck in production hell potentially. Like it's it's very promising looking, but holy crap, that's a lot of work to put on one person, which is yourself. Uh, but yeah, this is this is promising. I'm curious to see how it'll all go. But as per usual, I like to wait for things to get done more so this is more a preview just to let people know that it exists so if you want to check out the rest of these routes and see how deep the current build goes and all that link in the description and all that uh thanks for watching like always guys and i'll see you next time <laughs>